Hi everyone. You know, when it comes to conic sections, which is so important for your JE exam, the biggest pain point faced by students is the huge number of results, formulas and equations that they have to remember in this chapter. Now, I do agree that this is a struggle and that is why I am here to help you revisit all the most important results, all the most important facts from this entire chapter in just a few minutes. So let's begin with the very first conic, which is parabola. Now, the most popular ones which get asked the most in the paper are your standard rightward opening and standard leftward opening. Let's begin with the standard rightward opening parabola having its vertex at origin. Its equation is given by y square equals 4ax. Please understand that here the quantity a is positive. It represents the distance between the vertex and the focus as well as the vertex and the directrix. All right. Also, the coordinates of focus are given by a comma 0 and the equation of directrix is given by x equals minus a. That's pretty simple. You can clearly see that the parabola is symmetric about the x-axis. So x-axis happens to be its axis of symmetry. All right. Also, any point sitting on the parabola, it's Parametric coordinates are given by at squared, 280, where t is a real parameter. And last but not the least is the quantity 4a, which is sitting as the coefficient of x in the equation. This represents the length of lattice rectum. All right. Now, when you are flipping the parabola about the y-axis, you actually get your leftward opening parabola having its vertex at origin, which is given by y squared equals minus 4ax. Now, when you are just flipping the rightward about the y-axis, you are not disturbing the size or the shape of the parabola in any way. That is why the length of lattice rectum for even the leftward opening parabola, or for that matter, the upward or the downward opening as well, happens to be same 4a. All right, and this one also is symmetric about the x-axis, so x-axis happens to be its axis of symmetry. Also, again, A here also is positive. Again, it represents the distance between vertex and directrix as well as vertex and focus. Okay, so that means when from the focus you drop a perpendicular onto the directrix, its midpoint happens to be the vertex. Cool? Here, if there is any point sitting on the parabolic curve, the parametric coordinates are given by minus 80 square comma 280. Okay, focus coordinates are minus a comma 0 and equation of directrix is obviously x equals a. Cool. And now it's time to move on to something extremely important with respect to your J exam. It is properties of a focal chord. See, focal chord is nothing but any chord of the parabola which passes through the focus. And a very beautiful property about focal chord is that if PQ is a focal chord. So P and Q are the extremities of the focal chord. P has parameter T and Q has parameter T dash. Then the relationship between T and T dash will be that they are reciprocals of each other. So what you must understand is that product of the parameters of the extremities of the focal chord always comes out to be equal to 1. Which means that if T is the parameter of P, which is one extremity of the focal chord, the parameter for Q will be 1 by T. All right. Once this much is understood, if now I consider the standard rightward opening parabola, which is y squared equals 4ax, then this is one of its focal chord PQ. You can see how I have written the parametric coordinates of both P and Q here. How are T1, T2 related? T1 into T2 obviously is equal to 1 or T2 I can say is 1 upon T1. Correct. Then the length of this focal chord is given by A into T plus 1 by T whole square. Okay. Here with respect to P and Q, we have T1 in picture. So A into T1 plus 1 by T1 whole square. So T1 is parameter of P and 1 by T1 is parameter of Q. So this is how you write the length of the focal chord PQ. But if this focal chord happens to be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, which is the x-axis, it becomes the lattice rectum. And in this case, it is the smallest focal chord. So the length of this smallest focal chord, which is the lattice rectum, you already know is given by 4A. Cool. Moving on to, again, something very, very important from where almost all the time you get uh, some of the other question in the paper. It is equation of tangent to a parabola. Now, equation of tangent we study in three different forms. You have point form, you have parametric form, and you have slope form. Now, when I talk about point form, what is the technique? See, if x1, y1 happens to be the point of tangency for the parabola y squared equals 4ax, then you can write the equation of tangent in point form as t equals 0. First of all, how do you obtain t? 
Well, from the equation of the curve, you can obtain t by substituting x square with xx1, y square with yy1, x with x plus x1 by 2, and y with y plus y1 by 2. Here, you can see in the equation of the parabola, you have y square and you have x as the variables present. So replace y square with yy1 and replace x with x plus x1 by 2. Simplify and you get yy1 equals 2a times x plus x1 to be the equation of tangent in point form. So this gets applicable when you have Cartesian coordinates of the point of tangency known to you. Moving on next is the parametric form. Here you are aware of the parametric coordinates of the point of tangency which is at square comma 280. So you don't have to do anything. You have to use the point form only. But in place of x1, just plug in at square and in place of y1, plug in 280 and bingo. In terms of t, you will now have the equation of tangent as ty equals x plus at square where t represents the parameter involved in the uh, point of tangency. Last is your slope form, extremely important. It says that condition of tangency for y square equals 4ax is a by m. What does this mean? that a line of slope m written as y equals mx plus c, where c is the y-intercept. This happens to be a tangent to my standard rightward opening parabola y square equals 4ax if and only if the y-intercept c is equal to a by m. Got it? Understood? a is coming from the equation of the parabola y square equals 4ax and m is coming from the slope that was already available to you. Here you are getting the equation of tangent but you are not having the point of tangency with you the coordinates of the point of tangency with you they are given by a by m square comma 2a by m okay so when you have to write the equation of tangent in slope form you have the slope with you and using the slope you can compute the coordinates of point of tangency they are given by a by m square comma 2a by m when the parabola involved is y square equals 4ax got it after tangent, we obviously move on to normal. Again, equation of normal we study in the same three forms, point form, parametric form, and slope form. If you are aware of the point of tangency at which, again, you have drawn the normal, then you have to first write the equation of tangent in the point form. Correct? From there, you will get the slope of tangent. Its negative reciprocal will give you the slope of normal. You already have the point coordinates available. Using the point slope form, you can write the equation of normal at that point to the curve y squared equals 4ax. And that will give you y minus y1 is minus y1 by 2a times x minus x1. So you can see the equation is also written in the point slope form. Correct? Moving on to the parametric form again, the same logic applies here as well. Write the equation of tangent in the point form, but then in place of x1, replace x1 with at squared and replace y1 with 280. All right, and that's it. You will get the equation of normal in the, in what? Parametric form. All right, and slope form, very interesting and very important. y equals mx plus c happens to be a normal to my curve y squared equals 4ax provided c is equal to, this is c, minus 2am minus am cube. So c has to be equal to minus 2am minus am cube. This is about the normal of a parabola. Now let's move on to ellipse. When we have the standard horizontal ellipse whose center is at origin, that means an ellipse which is stretched along the x-axis and compressed along the y-axis. So it has major axis along the x-axis and minor axis along the y-axis. Its equation is given by x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared equals 1, where a and b or rather a squared and b squared are related with respect to or with the help of eccentricity e by this equation very 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 important relation it is b squared equals a squared times 1 minus e squared you can clearly see from the diagram that the coordinates of the foci are given by plus minus a e comma 0 the equation of directrices is given by plus minus a by e equals x and the coordinates of foci are given by plus minus a comma 0 also, the parametric coordinates of any point sitting on it are given by a cos theta, comma b sin theta. All right. If I talk about the equation of tangent for the ellipse, again, there are three forms, point form, parametric form, slope form. The logic for point form still remains the same. If x1, y1 are the Cartesian coordinates of the point of tangency for this ellipse, then all you have to do is write the equation of tangent as t equals 0. That means... In the equation of ellipse, replace x squared with xx1 and replace y squared with yy1 and bingo, you would be done. So t equals 0 is something universal, which gives you the equation of tangent in the point form for a parabola, ellipse, hyperbola, everything. 
okay next up is parametric form i already told you you have to write the equation of tangent in the point form only but in place of x1 substitute a cos theta in place of y1 you substitute b sin theta and you would be done you will be getting the equation of tangent in terms of sin theta and cos theta all right and moving on to the slope form little bit tricky but important to remember it is this that y equals mx plus c happens to be a tangent of your standard horizontal ellipse provided c is equal to plus minus under root a square m square plus b square or c square is equal to a square m square plus b square all right so you have two tangents of the same slope when you have an ellipse in picture they both are parallel to each other got it and last but not the least is equation of normal again you already know how to write the equation of normal in point form correct then write the equation of normal in point form but in place of x1 y1 you substitute the parametric coordinates of the point which are now available to you and that will give you the parametric form of equation of normal and lastly you have the slope form for equation of normal wherein wherein the value of c is a little bit again complicated but very important to remember so just like there are two tangents to an ellipse parallel to each other of the same slope there are two normals to an ellipse which are parallel to each other of the same slope one corresponding to the plus sign one corresponding to the minus sign next is time to move on to hyperbola now the standard equation of a hyperbola which has x axis as its transverse axis because both the foci are lying on the x axis and the y axis happens to be the conjugate axis is given by x square by a square minus y square by b square equals 1 and here the relationship between a b and e again which is extremely important is b square equals a square into e square minus 1 now why why is this the case because in the case of ellipse eccentricity is a fractional quantity lying between 0 and 1 okay but here eccentricity is greater than 1 so e is greater than 1 e square is greater than 1 that's why we have e square then minus 1 all right also in case of ellipse because your eccentricity was lying between 0 and 1 the situation was that a by e will be greater than a will be greater than ae remember if i talk about the positive x axis you first have your focus then the uh, the vertex and then you have the directrix correct but if i talk about this is for ellipse this is for ellipse but if i talk about the hyperbola and you can even check from the diagram because your eccentricity is greater than 1 your a by e is lesser than a is lesser than ae that is why you have a by e coming first then you have your a coming and then you have your ae coming getting my point so this is how you have to understand don't have to cram anything you have to understand the relevance of e in the coordinates or in the equations okay and that will help you remember all these facts very nicely and smoothly and very easily getting my point please remember people that 2a happens to be the length of transverse axis and 2b happens to be the length of conjugate axis here 0 comma b 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b these are two very important points they are called extremities of the conjugate axis and the distance between them as i said is 2b represents the length of the conjugate axis all right now please understand that when you have x square by a square minus y square by b square equals 1 you have minus sign with y term or y square term this means y axis will act as the conjugate axis and the other one x axis will give you the transverse axis where actually the uh, hyperbolic curve is going to intersect all right but if i do the opposite if i put minus sign with the x square term and plus sign with the y square term that means now x axis will act as the conjugate axis and y axis will act as my x axis will act as conjugate and y axis will act as transverse so my hyperbolic curve is going to intersect now the y axis so my focus is going to lie both my foci are going to lie on the y axis this is called your conjugate hyperbola okay this is called conjugate hyperbola and another way of writing its equation is x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to minus 1 so either this or this whatever you see you should understand that that is your vertical hyperbola which has upward and downward opening branches of hyperbola and this one that you can see on the screen right now i call it as the horizontal hyperbola it has leftward and rightward opening uh, branches hyperbolic branches all right got it so that's about your conjugate hyperbola as well now if we move on to the equation of tangent for a hyperbola again there are three forms point parametric slope and writing the equation of tangent for a hyperbola also in the point form is 
exactly the same. It is t equals zero. That means in the equation of your hyperbola, you will simply bring everything onto the left hand side, create right hand side equal to zero. In your expression on the left, which you declare as s, you have to replace x square with xx1, y square with y y1, and bingo, you are done. Now, when it comes to parametric coordinates of a point sitting on your standard hyperbola, which is the horizontal hyperbola, the coordinates are a sec theta comma b tan theta. So if you have to write the equation of tangent in the parametric form, write it in the point form, and then in place of x1, you substitute a sec theta, in place of y1, you substitute b tan theta, simplify and you're done. Last is your slope form, so y equals mx plus c happens to be a tangent to my standard horizontal hyperbola, which has its hyperbolic branches opening to the right and the left. That happens if and only if c is equal to plus minus under root a square m square minus b square. In the case of ellipse, it was plus, here it is minus. So basically, c square should be equal to a square m square minus b square. And again, you can clearly understand why is there a plus and a minus? Because corresponding to each sign, you will get two tangents of the same slope parallel to each other. Okay, so there will always be two parallel tangents of the same slope in a hyperbola. One you will get corresponding to the plus sign, other one corresponding to the minus sign. And similarly, we have equation of normal in the same three forms. So equation of normal in the point form you can very easily obtain with the help of equation of tangent in the point form because you know the slope of tangent and the slope of normal at x1, y1. They are negative reciprocals of each other. Correct? Once you have the equation of normal in the point form in place of x1, y1, just substitute the parametric coordinates and you will get the equation of normal in the parametric form as well. And this is again a little complicated but kind of in resemblance to what we had as the equation of normal in the ellipse. Okay, so that will help you remember it. This is your equation of normal in the slope form for your standard hyperbola. Last but definitely not the least is a very mini, very cute but very important concept of chord of contact. Now we have chord of contact with respect to an external point. So let's say you have a parabola and a point sitting outside it in its exterior region. Then from that point, I can draw two distinct tangents to my parabola which will touch my parabola at two distinct points of tangencies. Let's call it R and S. When you join R and S, you get a chord, which is called chord of contact with respect to point P, which was sitting outside. And here, the equation of this chord of contact is given by T equals zero. You will say, ma'am, the equation of tangent in the point form is also given by T equals zero. And yes, that really makes sense because if point P is not lying outside, but is sitting on the parabola, then you can draw a single unique tangent passing through it, having p as the point of tangency. And in that situation, t equals zero will represent the equation of that tangent. So if p is sitting on the curve, t equals zero is the equation of that unique tangent, which has p as the point of tangency. And when p is sitting outside the curve, then t equals zero happens to be the equation of chord of contact. Okay, got it? So here, if I have an ellipse, I just have to do one thing, Replace x square with xx1 and y square with yy1 and I will get the equation of chord of contact. In case of parabola, again, replace y square with yy1 and x with x plus x1 by 2 and get the equation of chord of co contact. In the case of hyperbola also, replace x square with xx1, y square with yy1 and bingo, get the equation of chord of contact. Done. So people, these were the bunch of most important formulas from conic sections from where almost every time repeatedly you get questions in the paper. Let me know in the comments what is the other chapter whose formulas or results or theorems you wish to revise and I will come up with that in my next session. Thank you so much. Take care.